What's going on people and welcome back to another drill tutorial. This time we are in Logic. This is something that you guys have been asking for for a little while but I've not been able to do it until now. So let's dive right into it. Um, first of all, let's talk about my main vocal chain. So um, starting it off with a compressor. Now it's worth doing a little bit of research into all of these compressors because almost all of them are modeled after actual compressors um, which I'm going to get into a little bit in a sec but the particular compressor that I'm using at the beginning of my chain is this Platinum Digital um, and this is quite a transparent compressor so I'm just using it to control my peaks and get everything leveled out a little bit so we're just doing like minus three to minus four decibels of reduction at four to one ratio we've got a pretty fast attack and a slow release like i said we're just trying to level out those peaks so next up is an eq and this eq is a little bit extreme we're carving out a lot of those low ends i was just trying to control the rumble sd's got quite a deep voice um also I've not got the beat stems and I was I was struggling a little bit to get the beat to sit in, uh, to get the vocals to sit in with the beat um, without kind of, it's the low end standing out too much. So we've done a, quite a lot of, of cuts at 130 hertz. We also did a little bit of cleaning up in the, the high mids and the mids, um, but that's our EQ. Obviously you always risk when you're doing that kind of cutting, you always risk thinning out your vocal making your vocal sound a little bit thin so that's why i've got this compressor here this is modeled after the 1176 blackface you've seen me use this before in previous videos i usually use the slate version or i think i've used the waves one once but this is the logic version is it they're based off the same compressor so they've got the same characteristics very good in the low end give your vocals a lot of body um, i like it on anything rap uh, drill, anything that needs to sound a little bit gritty. So we're doing about minus five to minus six, seven decibels of reduction at a four to one ratio, a medium to fast attack and a, a, a pretty slow release. Um, and before that, we have a DSR. Now, I don't really know much about this DSR. I'm not super familiar with it, but I was just kind of twisting knobs until it sounded right. We're doing, uh, we're controlling that 8.4K, um, the S's around that region there. After that second compressor, we've also got a second DSR, this time doing 10, uh, 10K. And then after that, we have another EQ. And as you can see, I'm carving out even more of the low ends, um, a little bit at 600 Hertz as well, 600, 700 Hertz. Um, I think those low ends were really giving me a problem. Um, and again, because we're, we're cutting out more of those low ends, we need to make that back up so our vocal doesn't sound too pathetic, um, which, I did by adding parallel compression, which I'm going to show you in a sec, but let me do a before and after of this EQ. Obviously the vocal is a little bit quiet, um, but we're going to kind of deal with that in a sec. Um, but yeah, it's, sound, it's starting to sound, although the low end is controlled, it is starting to sound a little bit lost in the source. So, I used a parallel compression compressor. So on this bus 10 here, we have a another 1176. This is the silver one. And we're doing a whole lot of, we're doing 20 to one. We're doing a 21 to one ratio and we're doing. We're doing minus 20. Sorry, I'm just getting my charger. You probably can see there. A bit low on the old battery. So, yeah, the, the good thing about this 1176 here, it's quite, it adds quite like a lot, a bit of a shine to your vocal. And because of I'm not done much EQ in terms of adding to the high end on my chain, 
I just wanted to add this not only to give it the body that I've taken out of the um, with the EQ in, which you're going to get by over compressing no matter what compressor you use. Um, but I also wanted to give it that shine. This second EQ here, obviously, when it, when it comes to stock EQs, unfortunately, you don't have usually have that many bands to work with. You know, with the Pro Q2, you've got pretty much as many bands as you're ever going to need. Um, so I just loaded up this second EQ here just because I wanted to do a small cut at 4K and add a little bit of shine there. Cool. Finally, we have my last compressor, which is modeled after the, I think it's the LA-2A. Um, again, I always, well not always, but I use the Waves version a lot at the end of my vocal chain just to give the vocal a little bit of pop. Um, also, something that is on this particular version of the LA-2A is a little distortion knob. That doesn't usually come with it doesn't come with the, the the waves one anyway and i've added soft distortion on it just because i felt like the vocal was sounding a little bit too clean and we're doing a three to one ratio this time with a fast attack and a fast release <laughs> Sweetin' this knife at net school of D Billy G, I'm an insane warlord. Two man step in a bundle, two two glock that's under the floorboard. How many times I step and splash and I turn that twat for all of that was mad. Grip the dip and stab. So as you can see, I'm just tiggling it, but it just makes the vocal pop a little bit. Um obviously it's getting louder as well, which is good. And that distortion just gives gives it a little bit of texture. I didn't want the vocal to be too clean. And that's why I've also put a bit crusher on there. And with the bit crusher, I'm just doing a six decibels drive, um, 15 bit bit crush, and I'm mixing it at 25%. Sweet, sweet, sweet in this knife at net school of D Billy G, I'm an insane warlord. Two man step in a bundle, two two glock that's under the floorboard. How many times I step and splash and I turn that twat for all of that was mad. Grip the just giving it a little bit of flavor as you can, as you can hear. So that is our main vocal chain. We do have a little gain on there as well, just because um, the drive kind of made it a little bit loud. So I just used this to bring it down a little bit. Um, cool. So let's move on to our ad libs. So our ad libs are, where are my ad libs? They are down here. Oh shit, what the hell have I done? <laughs> I'm gonna say this now, I hate Max. I hate using them. They do my head in. So anyway, um, AdLibs, I've just copied over all of my plugins from the main vocal. The only difference is this EQ here. So I've cut out some of the tops, like completely cut them out, done a cut in the lows and I've boosted these areas here. And this is just to make the AdLibs push them back a little bit in the mix, make them sound a little bit distant. We've also done some reverb on there we've got a reverb going uh quite high just to push those ad libs back in the mix to make the the main vocal stand out most and the ad libs just to sound like just a little flavor in the background um nothing else really oh yeah we have a ping pong delay here so if i mute this back in track Sweet, sweet, sweet in this knife at net school of D Billy G. I'm an insane warlord. Two man step in a bundle, two two. So as you can hear, the the delay is bouncing between your speakers, to, between your headphones. Uh, just a little trippy effect uh, that I like doing. You know, I like making use of all of the space in my in my tracks. Oh yeah, I've also got a bit crusher there, and I'm doing twenty decibels drive and a seventy nine percent or eighty percent mix. Cool, so the most interesting part of this particular mix are the stutters, which are here. All right, so nothing special about the chain, the actual chain. We do have a little bit of EQ in there, cutting out the low ends, uh, some compression, some compression, sorry, but nothing too, too crazy. I, I think I'm actually auto panning it as well. But what kind of gives this track, this mix, what makes it interesting is the effect that I did around the stutters. So if I mute the backing track and the main vocal. So um, I've got like a reverse reverb and also a reverse delay. 
And how you do that is you duplicate your track with the stutters on it. And you um, basically, you want to reverse it. So if I double click it here and click on functions, you can reverse your whatever you've highlighted. So I reverse my, my stutters so they're backwards. I then add a lot of reverb. Where is it? I thought I did. I thought I added a lot of reverb. I did a lot of reverb to the stutters. So the, the, the stutters are reversed and got a lot of reverb on them. And then you click file, bounce, track in place. And what that will do is it will bounce your track with the effects onto a new channel, which is down here. This is my, re uh, yeah, this is the reverb one. And then what you do then, because of obviously it's gonna be backwards, is you click functions and reverse. And what that does is flip that reverb to the other side of the stutter and make the stu the actual stutter back the way that it's meant to be. And I did the same with the delays, but instead of a, a reverb, like I mentioned, I just bounced it with a delay. And I think that's what this is. Oh wait, yeah, there's the reverb. And this is the delay that I used to, to flip the delay. Same Same technique as I did with the reverb, just like I said, with the delay instead of reverb. All right, so finally, we have our backing track. So the backing track has a filter on it and filtering stuff and automation is really easy in, in Logic, something that's definitely way better in Logic than in Pro Tools. So I have the, whatever filter this is, the auto filter. At auto filter, there you go. That's the, the automation there. And what that those photos do, it just makes, you know, it builds kind of like a little bit of anxiety. The listeners listening and thinking what the hell is happening here. Um, also, it makes the drop sound a lot harder because obviously you're cutting all those frequencies out when it does drop and all the frequencies are in it just sounds crazy um also i've done a few chops let's get this damn thing out of the way uh yeah we've got a few chops here let's zoom in a little bit and i'm on pack All right, so what? how you do this, this is just a tape stop. And how you do this in Logic is you click up here, um, you click the fade tool, you create a fade. So if I do one over here, create a little fade, and then you right click and click on slow down and that will make your tape stop. So I've done that, uh, so, let's, so you can hear with the, the actual backing track, the actual vocals. Press that pump, tryna pull up on a pump, tell a ton of man passes, Matt just rise and cock it, rockets hit that street, that's tragic magic, but when I So as you can see, those beat cuts are like going with his verse. So when he's doing a bit, when he's going a bit skippy, the beat's kind of cutting to make it sound hit a little bit, hit even meaner. Um, and this snare here, I copied, I duplicated our snare. So I just cut this snare here and I duplicated it like one, two, three, four times. And then I again use using that fader tool. I've just faded it in, and I think I even did some some panning. Uh, panning, yeah. As you can see, I've done some panning as well. I'm, I make this a little bit, uh, make this a little bit more extreme, so you can really hear it. Put it on forty. Cock it, rockets hit that street. That's tragic magic. Cool. And that's basically it for this track. I think I've got a little bit of mix bus compression at the end, which is stereo out here. Again, another compressor given to you by Logic that's modeled after a, an actual compressor. I use the Waves version on basically every single mix I do. Um, it's it's modeled after the, the SSL G bus 
and it's just a way to give your track a little bit of glue just kind of stick everything together but when I build that packet, any old boy get chopped and splattered. Phone, phone, phone call speed at Spanish, comment to Yama, spoil just bits and bow, bow, aim for his chest. And that's quite a lot to be fair. That's a lot more compression than, than I usually use on my mix bus, but I usually only do about one minus one decibels. And I think I'm going to turn this main vocal up a bit as well, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I've got a very, very slow attack, and that just make sure that our kick is coming through and not getting compressed that much to make it really slap and then a, a medium fast release at a four to one ratio the throw, bang that gauge, tryna turn a man go school trip up drop you get a dipper when i hit his head with my hitter man run man down with a Swing, swing, swing in the snap at next school of D Billy G. I'm an insane warlord. Two man step in a bando, two two glock that's under the floorboard. How many times I step and splash and I turn that twat for all of that was mad. Grip the dip and then stab or slap the whap of that twat. Anything to just get tripped and ching, man. Swing my ting for all of that. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. This is the end of the tutorial, obviously. You can even go back and watch the other video I did with this same track and you can kind of compare the two. Um, I think I got it pretty close considering this is all stock plugins. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how this came out. But thank you guys for watching as always. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. I, d I looked at my analytics the other day and it apparently only 7% of people that watch my videos are subscribed. Which is a boy thing. Subscribe man. Keep up to date with every video I drop. The more subscribers I get obviously the better for me and it will make me make these videos more worthwhile doing i love doing them anyway because i like helping you guys out and kind of talking about mixing but yeah man share it with your cat go knock on your neighbor's door tell them that that josh has got a new mix tutorial out in logic who would have thought and i will see you guys next time peace